Good morning, everyone. My name is Terry. I'm here at the Two Rooster Farm, and today I am gonna make some peach jam. I got some peaches from the Okanagan, which is in the middle of BC, and I decided before they start to go bad, I'm gonna make some peach jam and keep some for ourselves and sell some in our store. So first of all, um, you need to prepare your jars. So I have a, a bunch of jars and you just, you can either use your old jars or you, and buy sealer, the rings and the sealers, or I, I've used all my jars. So I'm gonna be using brand new jars. And so of course, all the sealers are all attached. So I just take them off and I put them into a pot of water and I'm gonna boil them for 10 minutes to sterilize them. The jars, normally I run them through a dishwasher and then I sterilize them after, but today I'm just gonna wash them in soap and water and then pour some boiling water over them and prepare them um, to make the jam. I have a big bag of peaches that last night when I had time, I actually peeled, peeled the skin off them and cut them in sort of portions. I need to cut them smaller. They will kind of, um, get smaller as you cook them, but I think it's a good idea just to cut them a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna do all the things. I'm gonna prep my jars, I'm gonna cut my peaches, and I'll come back and show you when I start to make the jam. Hi everyone, I'm back. So I have washed my jars with soap and water and sterilized them and I put them upside down on a clean towel. I'm in the middle of boiling my um, rings and sealers for 10 minutes and I finished chopping all of my, all of my peaches. So it sort of looks like that begin. So I'm just gonna pour it all into the pot. Today I'm using just the Bernardin, Bernardin um, Pectin Classic. It's not one of my favorites. It's during COVID, I'm having a hard time finding jars, finding pectin, because I think everybody is canning. So my favorite is actually this Pomona's Universal. It's um, It gives you the option of using part honey, so you're not using so much sugar. The Bernardin, it's a crazy amount of sugar. It's not diabetic friendly, but um, you need to use the proper amount of sugar or you, your jam doesn't set. And so it's kind of a waste. So for now, this is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use this uh, Bernardin Classic Pectin. So we've got all the peaches in the pot and we're gonna add, I have enough peaches to be able to triple the recipe. They say sometimes that's not a good idea to do more than one batch at a time because sometimes it affects whether the jam is going to set. I'm going to try it because it's a lot more work to have to make three separate batches of peach jam just to make sure it's going to set. So I'm going to be using three of these, these packages. Sorry about that. I just had a knock at the door and it was um, our tenants upstairs and they brought me this. <laughs> It's so awesome. It's so great. People know that we're the two rooster farm and that I love to collect chickens and roosters. And so they, they found this in a thrift store. So thank you very much, Alex and Danielle. That was awesome. Very nice. I'm going to have a special place for this. All right. So I was talking about, I've got the peaches um, in my pot. And now I'm just going to add my pectin and my lemon juice. So it's three boxes of the pectin. And then it is 
two tablespoons of lemon juice. So multiply by three, six tablespoons of lemon juice. Which I've already pre-measured. So I'm gonna put the lemon juice in there. And then you're gonna stir this up. Mix it all in. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward uh, directions. Cook jam, cook jelly, freezer jam. I don't think I ever make freezer jam. I don't have enough freezer space, but I definitely do a lot of cooked cooked jam. So, and peach is one of my favorites. Anyways, I'm gonna bring that to a boil. Uh, it says bring it to a rolling boil. Uh, and then I'm gonna be adding the sugar. So I'm just going to bring it to a boil. Be back in a minute. Hey Ruby, do you want to go for a walk? Is that is that a big hint? Maybe later. Good girl. Okay, I'm back. I've moved the camera so you can see Basically starting to uh, boil. I'm gonna add, it says a half a teaspoon per batch, so one and a half teaspoons of butter, and that reduces um, the foaming. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of butter to the recipe and stir that in. As you can already see that it's sort of starting to foam a bit. Peach jam is one of my favorites. I think my second favorite is rhubarb, which I just made a few weeks ago. Um, and sometimes I like to change it up a bit. So not just the regular um, peach jam, I like habanero peach jam. So it's just basically the same recipe. And then I add three chopped habanero peppers um, into the mix. You can remove the seeds to have, so it has less heat, but I like to put them in. It's, I don't know, it's just sort of like red pepper jelly, this habanero peach, oh my goodness. I put um, a cracker and a little bit of brie cheese and then I put a little uh, spoonful of the, the uh, habanero peach jelly and oh my goodness, it's so good, really good. So we're just gonna get this to a, roll, a rolling boil. It has to boil for a minute. And then you're gonna add your uh, gross amount of sugar, five cups per recipe. I'm adding 15 cups. I'm trying to not think about that. 15 cups of sugar to this recipe. But you gotta do what you gotta do. If you don't add the proper amount of sugar, you're gonna have like, you're gonna have like pancake syrup because it's not gonna set. So it's just about ready to add the sugar. I'm gonna use my potato masher and I'm just gonna mash the fruit a little bit just so that they're a little bit smaller. nicely. I'm going to add my sugar. I'm 
I always add, when I'm measuring my sugar, I measure it into a bowl. Because I don't know, it never fails to me. If I start measuring and I'm actually putting it right into the recipe, I lose count. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, what, uh, how much did I put in? So I always measure into a bowl and then I know I'm not gonna bugger up. <laughs> anyway, so I'm stirring it all. We're gonna combine it all. And then we're gonna let this go back to a boil and we're gonna boil it really, really hard for one minute. And then we're going to uh, turn the stove off. We're gonna remove, if there's any foam, we're gonna remove the foam and then we're gonna put them into our nice uh, hot sterile jars here. We're gonna clean the lid or the rim of the, uh, the top of the jar. So it's taken a little while to get to boil. It's just kind of starting now. So once it gets to a boil that you can't stir down, I'm gonna just set it for one minute. Hey Google, set timer for one minute. One minute, starting now. You have to continually stir it during that one minute. I've started, I should have started this sooner. Um, I have my water bath canner. You can sort of see it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Used to be my mom's. Thank you, mom. Mom doesn't can, can anymore. Mom is 82. So I don't blame her. I just give her the jam now. Uh, yeah, so I filled it half full. Or depending on what size jars. If you have larger jars, you don't want to put too much water, otherwise it overflows. So I probably filled the bottom part, there's two, two parts, the top and a bottom. And then you will fill your jars, wipe them clean, and then set them into your canner. And when this is at boiling, I'll put the lid on and I'll time it for 10 minutes in the water bath. Um, and then I'm gonna take it out and set it on a rack to cool. You'll hear um, little pings on the lid. That means that the jar is sealing. So that's a good good sound. It's not like your jar is exploding. It's like it's actually sealing. And you can tell uh, when you've uh, when they're cool that you'll be able to see that the little indent in the in the middle is is flat and you and you can't push the lid and it, it doesn't move. It's it so that that's when you know it's sealed. So I'm gonna start now to Fill my jars. It's very hot. Well, first of all, I'm going to get some of this foam off here. It's a little bit more foam than I want. Just try and you can sort of see there's a lot of foam on here. You don't really want that in your in your jam. Sometimes what I do, if I have concerns about whether it's going to um, be set enough, I will, um, especially if I'm using, doing a, a one with honey where I'm kind of 
doing it a little bit different than the recipe calls for. You don't want to put all your, your jam and seal it and get it all ready to go and then realize after that it didn't set. There's been many occasions where I've had to open up all my jars and throw it back into the pot and add more pectin because I just don't want that much pancake syrup. So I think I got most of it on here. set it in my fridge and I'm gonna check that it's set. And that's sort of how much foam I got off, lots. want it to be a half an inch from the top. You don't want to fill it too full. And, uh, I'm going to get a hot cloth. And I'm going to wipe. It's very hot. You've got to be careful when you touch the jar. I'm going to clean the top of the jar so there's no peach residue. Put my sealing lid on. Tighten it, and I'm going to set it in my water canner. finish and then I'll see you in a minute. So I'm back again. I've got uh, enough jars filled to fill the first water canner. So I've got them all in there. I'm going to put my lid on top and it's boiling. Hey Google, set timer for 10 minutes. Okay, 10, 10 minutes. minutes. I found now. that when I was putting my mix into the jars um, the fruit rises to the top, and so I decided that I didn't. They, I don't think the peaches were small enough, and they were all floating on top. So I just got my immersion blender, my little hand blender, and I just went in there and just mixed it around to get them smaller. And then it, the whole jar fills up, like it doesn't look like you just got peaches on the top, and so it, it was a lot better. So that's that's something you can do if you if you realize that you when you're putting them into the canner that it looks like all the fruit is floating on top. Doesn't look as nice. And I took out my little teaspoon of jam and it's gonna set, it's not falling from it. Mmm, mmm, really good. Anyway, so I'm gonna let this um, boil for 10 minutes. I'm gonna finish continuing to fill the rest of my jars. And uh, yeah, so, that's how easy it is to make jam. All right, so the timer has gone off. Carefully lift this lid off. Turn those down. And just use your oven mitts. And drop them. There it is, very hot. And I'm setting it on my rack. Very, very hot. Be a good idea to actually just get a towel and daub the water that's on top of the jars. Because when you pick your oven mitt up, the hot water soaks in the gloves and it makes it more difficult to get them out. So I'm going to set these here 
on the rack. I think I got 20, 20 small jars of jam, so that's awesome. And then I'm gonna put my next load in and, and do that for another 10 minutes. So I'm back again. I have just a, another minute or two uh, blowing the second batch. I have uh, have my jars over here. Most of them are sealed. You can sometimes see by touching it, it actually sealed it. Okay. This one's not sealed yet. It might take a little while. But you can... It's perfectly flat. There's no little little bump on it. As you can tell on, maybe you can't tell, but you can maybe tell on this one. You can see how it's not, it's not sealed yet. Yeah, this one has. So, fairly simple to make jam. Just a lot of prep work, you know, making sure your jam, your jars are sterilized and your lids are sterilized. But it doesn't take, just takes maybe a, a, an hour or two to make all that kind of jam. So looking forward to it to be cool and tomorrow I'm going to be putting some on my toast. So I hope you enjoyed my video. Oh, hey Google, turn off timer. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching uh, the process of making some peach jam. Um, I hope you learned something. Uh, it's a fairly simple recipe. But look what you can make in two hours. Wonderful. Anyways, every Saturday my goal is to put out a new video. So please subscribe. And until next time, this is Terry here at the Two Rooster Farm. Bye for now.